Seven months ago, I made the transition from wheel throwing to sculpting with my pottery. And here are five things that I learned from this seven month journey that you can apply to your own pottery as well. Number five will shock you. What is up, Shape Nation? This is Nick Torres here. And I'm going to be talking about the things I have learned from my sculpting journey so far. So number one that really, really helped me out a lot was have an idea of what you're trying to make. So when I first started sculpting, the first thing I was doing was really kind of trying to improve, like, you know, the, the way it looked. And then once I it got that down a little bit, I started focusing on how to make my own character, you know, make the actual design of the thing that I was trying to make. And I had an idea, some little features that I really wanted. Like, I knew I wanted to have a hood or a, and a mask on for my characters, but that was really it. But that wasn't enough to give me, make my vision come to life. So it wasn't until I started playing around with AI, I started putting in some like, you know, like features. I said, create me a character with a mix of Moon Knight and Nightwing. And, you know, it spit out a character and an image. And then that's when my vision slowly started coming to life. And I was able to have that idea I had in my mind and made it come to life because I knew what I was making. So that is tip number one. Have an idea of what you are making, or at least somewhat an idea. It doesn't have to be a full idea. Just have like some idea of what direction you're trying to go with your pottery, with your sculptures, with your hand loading, whatever it is you're making. Just have an idea of what you are trying to make, because that will make things go a lot smoother for you. Tip number two is starting small and work your way up. So when I was learning how to sculpt my characters that I'm making, I started really, really small. And I started with one thing at a time as well. I started with my with the arms and I started with a small arm and I wanted to look, make that look good. And then once I made that look good, I transitioned to like the body or and then I would transition to the legs and then the head. And I just kept making transitions from that. But I started from that one little section of my sculptures, which was which was the arm. And you could apply this to your pottery as well. So start small. If you are throwing on the wheel, start small, maybe with about a pound of clay and try to reach the maximum potential on that pound of clay. Then move up to about a pound and a half clay and then try to reach the maximum potential on that pound and a half of clay. Then maybe move up to three pounds of clay. Again, try to make the, the maximum amount of potential. And just keep working your way up until you're able to get that large amount of things. Because if you jump right into the deep end, then you're going to end up drowning. And we don't want that. And that's when things start getting a little bit difficult. You maybe stop making pottery. So you have to start small and then work your way up to the bigger things. That should help you. I know it helped me a lot. And I think it will help you a lot as well. If you just start small and then work your way up. And that brings me to my third point. To recap a little bit. So the first thing that I learned was to have an idea in, my, in your mind of what you are trying to make. Whatever it is. If you're sculpting, hand building or wheel throwing, having at least an idea of what you're trying to make. The second thing is, is to start small and work your way up to larger things. The third thing I learned from my time sculpting over these seven months is to make small improvements over time. When I was coming up with the character designs for my character, I would just start doing really anything. And then I would look, I would make it, I would finish it, and I would look at the character and some things would kind of feel a little off. You know, maybe the design was a little off or maybe the, the arm length was a little off. And so I would make tiny improvements the next time I would go out into the studio and make, make a sculpture. I'd make tiny, tiny, tiny improvements. So maybe let's say I have a hood on my character, but I didn't really like the hood. I would take off the hood and then maybe replace it with a bandana around the head. And those are the type of small adjustments you can make with your own pottery. So like maybe if you are wheel throwing right now, for example, 
if you are wheel throwing and you make a shape that you maybe normally make or you just make the shape and you don't you feel like something is a little off try making a super super tiny improvement to it see see what where that takes you so if you maybe make a shape like it's a like let's say it's a bulbous shape try making one little indent on one side see where that takes you and then if you don't like it great try another small improvement these small improvements will start stacking on one of another one and none none and they'll just keep going and going and going until you find that one thing that's like yes this is my baby this is what i want so make small tiny improvements so here are the three tips so far number one is to have an idea of what you are going to make number two is to start small and work your way up number three is to make small improvements over time and finally here we are at number four is if you have an idea try it out you're never going to know what your how your idea is going to turn out unless you try it out i had to learn that the hard way i would get into a little bit of a zone right and I'm like, yes, this character is looking good. I'm I'm kind of satisfied with this character. And then I would get an idea. I'd get a little bit afraid to try it because I didn't know if I would mess up the actual design. But because I would try the idea out, I would either see if it if it did well or if it made it even better. So you have to try out new ideas out, and that's how you're going to continue evolve your pottery as well. If you have an idea, try it out that is key here if you have an idea try it out because that's you're not going to know unless you try it out so here are the four tips again number one is having an idea of what you are going to make number two starting small and working your way up number three making small improvements over time number four is if you have an idea try it and finally number five my personal favorite and i think this one will help you the most is consistency over technique what do i mean by consistency over technique so you see too many times people focus just on the technique you know they think if like oh if i get this technique down then i won't ever have to worry about it again but the opposite is actually true you should be worried focusing more on consistency rather than technique because the te technique can come later the consistency part is what's hard because how many times have you wanted to maybe make pottery, but you just didn't want to get out of bed? Or maybe you're a little bit tired from work and you just want to rest and you just want to go home, eat a hot meal, maybe watch some TV, let your mind like have that little break. And, and then you want to make pottery, but it may come so much harder to make pottery because you are in that zone, you're in that state of just wanting to rest. So the consistency part is the hardest thing to get down and but it's also the most important thing it's better than technique to learn if you get the consistency part down the technique will come later so here's a little tip that you can do that i learned from yoshi fuji so he learned from one of his mentors that if you are struggling to get into the studio and the, into the studio enough he said to just go into the studio and just sit there Sit there for like five minutes and just sit there. That's all you have to do. You don't have to make anything. You don't have to do anything else. You can just sit there. Sit there in the studio. But by simply going to the studio or whatever you're, wherever you're making the pottery at, that simple action of just going to that studio is going to help you actually be able to get that consistency down. You're going to be able to start you're going to want to start making pottery simply by just sitting in that room. So those are the five tips. Number one is to have an idea of what you are going to make. Number two, starting small and work your way up. Number three, make small improvements over time. Number four, if you have an idea, try it out. Number five, and the most important one is consistency over technique. I hope you guys enjoy this episode and i'll see you guys next time